All right, so I'm gonna get started. Um, he introduced who I am uh, as a work person. Uh, so that's what I do. I do computer stuff by day, but I have my degrees in music performance and I do still perform sometimes, um, also as mentioned. Um, I also have two kids. They're ages seven and three now, and they're equally opinionated and into music. <laughs> I'm very opinionated. Um, I mention them because they're important to this talk. So here's a question you'll hear from me all the time if you work with me. What's the problem being solved for? In my case, it's that I was spending a lot of my time being a human jukebox for my kids. The older one can manage a lot of things now, including voice assistance, but the younger one isn't quite there yet, and even if she was, our house can be very noisy, and 90% of people who come here are Spanish speakers, which gets confusing for devices set in English. Um, I live in Costa Rica. Uh, my husband is Costa Rican, so uh, that's, that's why people here speak Spanish, um, and they sort of generally did before anyway. Um, in any case, you should hear the things we have to do to get El Reino Infantil playing. Uh, the last time I tried, and I posted a video of this on Twitter, the last time I tried this, I got the reply, I couldn't find Odreidel Infant Eel. <laughs> we also have issues where the kids like some songs off of Just Dance, where they only play edited versions, but as much as I love her, there is no way I'm having my small children listen to an unedited version of Cardi B. <laughs> Uh, so they have specific things they want to listen to, and I want to be able to tightly curate as well. I had seen this tweet go around, uh, whatever, December 2018, and thought to myself, I should make that someday. So with Christmas the next year, 2019, approaching, and two months of school break ahead, because our school year here is different than it is in the US, uh, it was time to solve my jukebox problem. So first up, supplies. One of the reasons I wanted to build this using a Raspberry Pi specifically is because I have three older ones I've gotten as speaker gifts over the years and they're just kind of hanging around doing nothing. Um, I ordered a couple more things off Amazon and had my very loyal spouse drag them back for me after one of his gigs in the US. Um, I could probably have found most of this stuff locally, but electronics can be very expensive and it takes a lot of phone calls and driving around to locate specific items. Here's what I used, a Raspberry Pi, uh, it's in a little case that has WordPress stickers, um, magnetic stripe cards, a card writer, which is the bigger one, uh, a card reader, the smaller one, and USB powered speakers so they wouldn't have to have a separate power source. Um, I forgot to include the speakers in this photo. Uh, I collected everything and I started testing components. First was making sure I could get Spotify playback on a Raspberry Pi at all. So I have no idea what I'm doing. After a bunch of Googling, I decided to do this using Pi Music Box, which was super easy to install and get set up. Uh, I actually probably took longer to try to find a USB keyboard before realizing that a wireless Apple keyboard works just fine with the cable plugged in. And now the next part, making the cards work. My idea was to put Spotify URIs on the cards and have that trigger playback, right? Enter Spotify URI and have Pi Music Box start the, start the track. Uh, USB card readers are basically keyboard emulators. You swipe the card and the data is sent to the computer as though you typed it super fast. Um, I plugged in my card reader and I swiped an old bank card, you know, just in case it was like trying to steal my data. Um, and all I got were some numbers. So now I've worked in retail and I know that your name is also encoded onto the card. Here's what I was expecting to see. A card number, uh, my name, some other information. Oh, it actually has a dash in my name. I wasn't expecting that. Um, the uh, a, a, It's like a checksum slash uh, encoded information about like expiration. Um, and then those numbers are actually repeated. But instead, this is what I would get out of my card. This is real, uh, real swipes that I got from my card readers. Um, and sometimes I would even just get this, right? So what's going on? It turns out I had a faulty card reader of course. Uh, this would become even more evident way later on after everything was done because it occasionally sends ghost output and will randomly start tracks. Um, I went to a couple stores nearby uh, looking for a new card reader, but I couldn't find one and nobody at those stores knew where I could even find something like that. Uh, so I did what all coders eventually have to do. I hacked around it. So magnetic stripe cards typically have three tracks of information the first being able to store the most data, and the second and third only being able to hold some numbers, and it's like a, a, a limited number of numbers. 
I tried encoding Spotify URIs onto the first track, but between the card reader not reading the first track and Spotify URIs being case sensitive, which if you didn't notice, uh, my name was in all caps, uh, this was a no-go. My buggy card reader actually sent me down the right direction because otherwise I probably would have tried to figure something out involving the URIs because I was sort of mentally stuck on that. Um, I decided I would encode just a number onto the second and third tracks. This also did not work correctly the first time. I guess maybe the amount of data is too small or something. Uh, so I had to encode each number with three digits, left padded with zeros as necessary, right? Our favorite thing, left pad. Um, I also decided to encode the number onto all three tracks just to be like super sure that it was there. So now that this was working, right? I was encoding the card uh, with the card writer with the number on all three tracks and then reading it with my card reader. So now that this was working, I knew what I had to do. I needed to have each number correspond to a line in a text file. But how do I make that text file and manage it? With hundreds of tracks, that could get very tedious very quickly. Well, a Spotify playlist made a lot of sense. Uh, I can keep stuff in order. You can select all and copy it as a list of Spotify URIs, which is actually pretty cool. And then I have the same list of music to play in the car or wherever else. I also just really love making playlists. So this is, this is a screenshot of the playlist. I have a kid's jukebox playlist, very dry naming. Um, I can add more songs, I can add more tracks and change stuff up if like a track goes defunct, right? Like if I get geo-locked out of a track uh, or if my kids get tired of a song, which happens with children. This gets copy pasted into a text file that goes onto the Raspberry Pi. <laughs> you wanna listen to this for bang bang bang? Okay, um, so now for some code, okay? The, the tiny code part of my talk. Uh, taking swipe card input and making it play a song. I spent probably close to a week with a code editor open and I was just staring blankly at it, like not even sure where to start. I overthought myself in huge circles, uh, reading about people's Python based setups and RFID chip versions and wondering if maybe this was all a mistake because I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, until finally one night with the holiday looming, I wrote something, anything, and it worked on the first try. I genuinely, I could not believe it. This is my first run of code. It's literally five lines of bash. Uh, I chose bash for two reasons. One, I don't have to set up anything else like Python and any associated libraries, uh, like for reading input. And two, I'm actually pretty decent with bash, um, especially after forcing myself to, myself to learn how to do do bash, um, write bash by doing a bunch of custom things to my prompt several years ago. Uh, this code does exactly what it says, uh, but there's a pretty cryptic bashism mm -hmm. and I am the very liberal code commenting school. So I added comments to that bashism, which is called parameter expansion and the set bit. This helps me and anybody else looking because of course, as a director of open source, I wanted to open source this. Again, this code, it worked perfectly. Um, until I got to card number eight. And then I would get an error. I sat there stumped until suddenly all my years of dealing with loose typing in PHP washed over me. Octal. <laughs> Since I was padding with zeros when I got to 008 and 009, it yelled at me that that wasn't a real number. So a little more said to remove those leading zeros here on line six. Then I wanted to add a special case card to tell the playback so my kids could stop music as necessary. Pi Music Box does come with a web UI, which I sometimes use to manage things from like across the house. But the idea here was to only use cards. This has been extremely successful and my kids actually keep that play pause card at the back of the rack of cards so that they can always find it. Even the younger one has a stout. She will look and get the card and pause playback. I decided to use 999 since I was using three digit numbers and I don't have nearly that many cards and I really, really hope that I never do. And then finally, my senior engineering mindset. Make sure you account for error cases. Here, I want to account for not finding a number in the input as well as potentially not finding a corresponding line in the text file. And that's it. That's the entire script. 27 lines, including comments and white space. It's tiny code. Okay, so now I have this Raspberry Pi able to play Spotify tracks off of cards, but it still requires me to log in and get things started. So how do I make it skip manual login and start my script on its own? 
That is, how do I make it headless? You don't have to worry about memorizing this. I have everything written out and available to you um, that you can refer to at your leisure. This is just to show you that it's honestly really not that bad. You download the file, uh, set up the automatic login, and then make it run your file, your script on login. So everything was working. So now onto the assembly of the object. I went to a couple stores to see if any existing boxes jumped out at me as a good solution, but didn't find anything. My brother-in-law does happen to have a 3D printer, but I didn't have any particular design in mind and honestly, time was running out. I poked around my endless supply of organizers because I'm a uh, slightly compulsive organizer and found these in my stash. Some modular stacking boxes from one of my favorite places, the container store, and heavy duty double-sided tape. Seriously, this tape this is not an ad, but this tape is ridiculous. I've actually since acquired a properly working card reader, but I can't pry off the old one, so I haven't actually replaced that part. It just randomly plays on the track sometimes. Anyway, a little cable organizing later, and ta-da! A compact little jukebox ready for gifting. But wait, I haven't talked about the artwork yet. And there's stickers! I love stickers! <laughs> Now that entire, that inspiration project that I talked about at the beginning also used stickers, but the creator wrote an entire React app that pulled the artwork for him and everything. I may be a programmer, but I am not made like that. So I returned to something I actually know how to use, which is a graphics editor. So shout out to anybody else whose formative web experiences include PaintShop Pro. I made myself a template and then grabbed album art manually. Another reason why I decided to get art myself was because I didn't always want the album art that a script would grab. So for instance, for Mother Goose Club songs, I wanted to get a screenshot from the video for the song so that my then two-year-old could identify the specific song she wanted, because as smart as I think my kids are, a two-year-old is not reading titles and artists off of a label. I exported these as PDFs and headed to a nearby office supply store to have them printed out on adhesive paper, which I then cut to size and applied to the cards. I did everything in numerical order. You might have noticed I wrote a number in Sharpie on the back of the card in the previous picture. Um, so that kept it easy, but also I very much believe in trust but verify. So I swiped every single card before applying the label. And yes, it includes BTS. So finally, I presented this to my kids and showed them how it worked. And after just a couple of days, both of them were masters of their new musical domain. I put it on a little shelving unit in the area between their bedrooms and completely on their own, I promise, on their own. They negotiated a cue system between them, where they light up cards on the shelf for what they want to play next. They have absolutely loved their own little device. My seven-year-old loves to tell people that his mom made this because she's the best programmer, and it's just been all around joy watching them use a tactile device that brings them something that they love digitally. I hope you've enjoyed hearing about my first foray into hardware tinkering. I have everything that you need to get it going, including the sticker template and files to make the card making easier, available on my GitHub, uh, where I'm just Helen. And here's a little demo for you, uh, brought to you by my younger child. <laughs>